Hello! Today I'm going to prepare a movie about predictions of ships maneuvering motion. Uh, and again I will use the wonderful summon planning tool for this uh, task. And what I'm going to show is uh, I start first with some simplified linear predictions. You know some of them from the ACTIS and radar uh, equipment on board of the vessel. And one is very familiar already. This is a straight speed vector. It is a prediction to forecast the future. And then there's the more advanced curved path prediction. Both of them have a lot of limitations. And so we set out to develop a full dynamic prediction which is uh, a new and very innovative uh, development. It's a prediction which is uh, used for safe and effective maneuvering operations. Okay, let's start first with the speed vector. Here's the interface of the Summon planning tool. So it's uh, uh, based on fast time simulation, but uh, we can hop from one second or one minute to the next one to demonstrate um, some relationships very fast. Okay, what you see here is the ship is going to enter the port of Rostock and wants to turn into this sidearm. Uh, to have an idea where the ship is in the next one, two, three, four, five, six minutes, there's the so-called speed vector. It can be adjusted here for the time being. It is set to three minutes, but it could also extend it to six minutes. And it is saying after three minutes, this position of uh, the common reference point is here, if the ship is proceeding straight ahead. And um, be aware, the rate of turn is not included in this uh, situation. But what can the um, speed vector used for? So if you know that this is a certain distance uh, related to the ship speed, we could, for instance, use it as an indicator for a certain distance, like a stopping distance. I showed that already in the stopping movie, where, how you can do that, but this can be uh, shown here. Um, the speed vector does not represent the entire ship, it's only focused on the so-called common reference point. So it's helpful to steer a ship on a straight track or at least if the uh, ship is starting to turning then it can indicate the trends of the motion. I will demonstrate this. Uh, I set the rudder now to starboard 30 degrees. So if the ship would advance every second, uh, I could do this like this, but this is very slow. You see the speed vector is moving every second. So I will speed it a little bit up. I use now 10 seconds as a measure. As a, so this is after 10, 20, 30 seconds. So you see the ship is moving and the speed vector is moving accordingly. So you can see the trend where the ship is going. Um, but this speed vector is taking the speed always as constant from the inputs of the uh, sensors. Uh, and you should be aware if you switch it to speed over ground or speed through water on some ship's equipment, it will be forwarded to the speed vector. Okay, this is the speed vector. Uh, the next uh, I want to show, and I will move the ship now back here to the initial situation. The next I want to show is the so-called static prediction. That means past prediction, which you know from actors and radar. And, uh, and I will also show the shapes, the shapes again with that one. And the shapes should be shown uh, every uh, six, uh, every, every minute for six minutes. So what you see here is when the uh, static pass prediction um, 
is, is used, it presents first the same as a speed vector. Uh, so you see the shape every minute. And if you use it now for turning motion, then you see I do it now for every 10 seconds and you see how it's proceeding. So what you see is that now the input from the rate of turn and from the speed is used uh, to simulate a, um, a curved path, which is always a circle segment because the rate of turn and the speed will take in as constant. So it's representing the momentary uh, motion of the ship vessels, but as constant. So all of the shapes are here um, in a distance, uh, in the same distance, because the speed is constant. So, but what you see is uh, that, the, uh, that the curve is already to be seen here. Uh, but what you see is it's only changing if the rate of turn is changing. But you have a good idea what the ship is doing in the next moment, but you cannot trust then this will be the, uh, the, the final solution, because if the ship is proceeding further, then also these, um, paths, uh, these uh, curved paths might uh, be... Uh, so, if we want to go into this uh, um, sidearm, uh, we would now maybe use... Oh, we, we will hit the corner here. So we set a maneuvering, or we would change the rudder uh, like this. So the rudder is changed maybe to um, midships, but in this case nothing is to be seen on this prediction already, because it's only changing if the ship motion is changing. So every 10 seconds you see, okay, this will be the track of the vessel. In this case we would not make it here in this part. So it's quite limited uh, and it's not fully predicting what the ship will really do. So it, it's indicating trends of the motion, but it's not fully available as a, as a tool to aim into a certain part. Um, normally you would think I should have uh, indicated here more stronger turning motion in the very beginning that I see that we are aiming into this part. With this wonderful tool we can uh, go back. So if I go back in the first part, I used it here with 30 degree of rudder. Now I switch it maybe to 35 degrees. Then you would see, okay, we might uh, make it around the corner, uh, go into the next part and um, then we see that the um, ship might be already better. Nah, it's a little bit better, but not fully. So, um, it's not really reliable. That's why it is, there are a lot of warnings uh, to be carefully using this kind of part. And the last part I want to show is the so-called dynamic prediction. That is a new way of prediction based on the input of the initial data of the vessel. So every second we receive all the NAV sensors, wind sensors, and whatsoever, depth sensor, and we get also the commands, the commanded values of the ship. Uh, I will bring the ship uh, back now uh, to the initial position. So this was what we have seen here. So, and now, Sorry. I will switch all the maneuvers uh, I have already inserted. And now I add the dynamic prediction to this one. So I switch to the shapes of the dynamic prediction. And you immediately see if I have used the 35 degree rudder, then mm, I won't make this term around this corner. So we need to have some extra ideas. Um, 35 degrees already hard rudder. So what we could have in mind, for instance, uh, we use the bow thruster is maybe not an option because it's still six knots, but we could split the engines, for instance. So one engine is going astern 
and the other one is going ahead. So this would immediately uh, see a better idea. So we could move the ship forward and when the ship is moving then you see, okay, you can compare both of the predictions. So this is now the curved, the path prediction and this is the dynamic prediction. So we would go up to the next uh, how the suitable maneuvering point like here and then we would uh, like here and then we would uh, switch to a next command. So we could release the rudder to zero and then we make it. What we also to see is okay we will make it. The turn is perfect. Um, what we could do is now if we move the ship, the ship is moving forward then you see that the path prediction because it's a momentary representation of the momentary speed and turning rate so this path prediction goes into the dynamic prediction. So in the final end they will be both onto each other. What does it mean? Uh, this means in this case the dynamic prediction is precise. So it's a sort of quality marker. I always would recommend to use both of the prediction. The static path prediction which is already known together with the uh, dynamic path prediction to have it as a quality marker. When we keep the commands like here and the ship is only moving then the curved, uh, the, the path prediction will go into the dynamic prediction. Um, there could be some situations where it is not happening. For instance, if the dynamic prediction has no information about current. If the current is setting in this situation, then we would see that the prediction is slightly moving in this direction with the current. Uh, by the way, this is a very good indicator that there is a current because otherwise you would not really see it. Maybe comparing the uh, speed through water and speed over ground to get an idea. But um, here you have a, a, a graphical representation. Okay, if the prediction is moving then there might be some undetected effects um, which could be um, traced and tracked by, by this part. And you could steer against these motions. So if you see that due to the current um, the prediction goes in this part then you would see okay I took more rudder to prevent from hitting the corner here. So there could be various ideas uh, to use this prediction. And what I want to stress is by means of this dynamic prediction you can really aim into uh, a certain desired condition and even is there, if there's uh, maybe an, a sudden effect, maybe uh, by uh, there's a certain wind gust coming up. So wind gust maybe with 20 knots, 20 knots, 20 knots, enter. Then you would immediately see, oh, the prediction is going into another direction. So we could steer against this to uh, indicate, to increase the rudder angle, uh, maybe to use the thruster also now because the speed is now less than four knots. So you have a lot of options uh, to, uh, to fight against external effects like wind because the wind sensor immediately shows the simulation model, oh there's some wind, you have to take care of this one. Okay, thank you very much.